Good morning. Today is Friday, December 29th, 2023. I had the privilege to attend in person maybe a handful of shiurim classes from the Rav, Rabbi Yosef Soloveitchik. What I shared with you last night was from an earlier time. As I mentioned, it was from a recording. But I want to share with you today is part of a, a shir, a parsha class that I actually had the privilege to hear in person. And I want to share with you just a small part of it. Our parsha, the parsha of Ayichi, seems extraneous to Sefer Bereshis, to the book of Ex- to the book of uh, Genesis. A number of the commentators point this out: that each of the five books of the Torah has an internal theme, a beginning, and an end. Now, what I'm going to share with you is different than what I shared last night from Rabbi Sachs. But the end of the narrative of Bereshis was reached in last week's Torah portion in the Parsha Vayigash when Yaakov is finally with his entire family in Egypt, reunited with Yosef. That is the end of the book in the sense that if the theme of the book is creation, and our sages say another name for the book of Bereshit is Sefer Hayetzira, the book of creation. Well, it's the creation of the world, and it's also the creation of Bnei Yisrael, the Jewish people. That was accomplished already when they were all reunited in Egypt last week's Parsha, the Parsha of Ayigash. Why is the death of Yaakov necessary to this theme, why is it in Bereshis at all? Let it be the first portion in the next book, the book of Shmos. So the Rav, Rabbi Yosef Salavetra, begins in order to answer this question with another question, a classic question. The question that is asked by Rashi at the very beginning of Bereshis, the Torah begins, Bereshis, Bara Elakim, Esa Shemayim Esar. It's in the beginning God created heaven and earth. Rashi asks, why does the Torah begin with Bereshis and not begin partway through the book of Shemos with Hachodesh Hazelachem Rosh Chodashim? This month should be for you the first of your months, and this is how you will order your uh, the Jewish calendar. That was the first mitzvah that was commanded by God through Moshe to the entire Jewish people. And the Torah means hora; it means teaching. So Rashi asks, if the Torah means teaching, it should teach the mitzvahs, the commandments. And the first commandment is about the Jewish calendar. Yes, of course, it's true that in the book of Bereshit, there are a few commandments listed, like to be fruitful and multiply, to have brismila. But in fact, technically speaking, those do not become mitzvahs for the Jewish people until the moment of standing at Sinai, later when God commands them. And the first mitzvah that God commanded the entire Jewish people is in the book of Shmos. Why is that not the beginning of the Torah? That's Rashi's answer. That's Rashi's question. So there are a number of classic answers to this question. The Kliyakar says, the reason the Torah says with Bereshit bara is in order for us to have a basic emuna, a basic belief in God's creation of the world. Everything rests on God as a creator. That before the world there was nothing, only God. And God brought that into being. So, It is essential to our belief structure. And therefore, the Torah is not only about learning laws, mitzvos, the Torah is also about learning belief, the philosophy, the theology. That's what the Kliyakar says. The Ramban and others suggest a different answer. 
that in fact, through the narratives in Barashas, we learn lessons. We learn lessons through the narratives. As we've been discussing all these past weeks, we learn lessons in what to do. We learn lessons in what not to do. That's also teaching. You can teach a person in terms of giving them rules, and you can also teach a person by telling them stories and drawing the inferences from those stories. So the teaching of the Torah, according to the Ramban, starts at the very beginning. But then Rashi gives an answer that is so prescient to our time. Rashi says that there will come a time when the nations of the world will turn to Israel and they will say, Listim atem, you are thieves. You have no right to the land of Israel. What are you doing in the land of Israel? You stole it from us. Listim atem, you are thieves. And therefore, the very first words of the Torah are, Bereshus bara lakim, esa shomayim aretz, God created the earth. And that means it belongs to God. And God gave it to Avraham to give to his descendants for all time. The reason that we know that we belong in Israel is because of the first Pasuk, Bereshus Barolakim. The world belongs to God, and God promised it to us. End of discussion. In last week's Torah portion, the Parsha of Ayigash, Yaakov leaves Israel. He hears that his son Yosef is alive. His son Yosef wants him to come with his family so that Yosef can take care of them where there is food in Egypt, because remember, there's a famine. And Yaakov is very hesitant. He is unwilling to go. He does not want to leave Israel. Because he worried, he feared that as a people, as an extended family, he is worried that he and his descendants will never return. His father Yitzchak never left the land of Israel. Avraham did leave Israel for a short while and did return, but he left with just himself and his wife Sarah and his nephew Lot. It was easy for them to return. It was a small group. But has it ever happened that there was an emigration pattern that was reversed, where an entire people moved to one place and then after some amount of time moved back? The answer is no. It does not exist in human history. There has never been a group of, a large, significant group of people who came to the U.S. from Ireland who decided we're going back to Ireland. Yes, individuals, but never as a people. There's never been the Italian people who decided we're going to move back to Italy, etc., etc. It's fascinating. A number of years ago, the Dalai Lama met with a group of Jews And he asked them a question because the Dalai Lama oversees a worldwide group of people who follow him. And because of the politics and China, they are dispersed. And the Dalai Lama asked the Jews that he invited to come meet with him, how do we get them back? How do we bring back people who have been exiled. And the truth is, it is only we who have been able to do that. And Yaakov was determined, and Yaakov had a solution. He had an idea about how to make this happen. Listen carefully, please, to Yaakov's last words near the end of our Torah portion this week. Vayitzavosam vayomra aleim, 
Yaakov spoke to his sons after he had given them each blessings. He spoke to them and he said, I am about to pass away. Kivru osi el avosai, el ma'ara asher bistei Ephron achiti. Bury me in the land of my fathers, in the cave which came from Ephron the Chiti. Now the truth is, that really is the end of the instruction. Yaakov says to his children, I want to be buried back in Israel. By the way, his wife Leah was buried there. His father, his mother, his mother, they were buried there. He wanted to be buried in his family, um, um, in his family area. The instruction could have ended there, but it does not. Because Yaakov goes on, and it's a little hard to understand why Yaakov has to include this here. One more time, let's start from the beginning. And Yaakov commanded all of his sons and said to them, I'm about to pass away. Bury me in the place where my fathers are buried. In the, fi- in the cave, which is in the field that belonged to Ephron, Asher Kana Avram as Asada makes Ephron Akiti Lakuz's cover, that Avram had purchased from Ephron. Shamo Kavru as Avram, Ve Sara Ishto, that's where Avram and Sarah buried. Shamo Kavru as Yitzchak, Ve Rivka Ishto, that's where his father and mother, Yitzchak and Rivka, buried. The Shamo Kavati as Leah, and that is where I buried Leah. Remember, Rachel was buried in another place. Mikne hasoda vamara sherbo meis b'nei ches. In the place that was purchased from the people of Ches, from Ephron Hachiti. Okay, I understand. You want to be buried in Israel, fine. But why review the entire transaction? Why not just say the first line? Bury me there. Says Rav Salavechik, with these words, Yaakov taught his children and all of his children, including us, that though Yaakov left Israel, and you understand when Yaakov and his family left Israel, there was no connection at, those, at that moment between the Jewish people and Israel, meaning there, was, there were no people left. None of Yaakov's family remained. They were all in Egypt. But Yaakov meant to say to his children and to us that his ownership, our ownership of the land of Israel continues. Yaakov's burial in Israel validated and confirmed the covenant that God had made with Avram and then Yitzchak and then Yaakov, that Yaakov and his descendants would own the land forever. Even if there would come a time where all or some of them were no longer there, nothing could disturb the connection between the Jewish people and the land of Israel. And that sets the pattern for us today. Had Yaakov not said this, had Yaakov been buried in Egypt, it is very possible that we would never have left, that we would still be there. Yaakov's last wish cements our connection to the land of Israel, even if all or some of us are absent. And therefore, explains the Rav, the death of Yaakov in our Parsha is not an interruption in the book of Bereshis. It's not extraneous to the theme. It is rather intrinsic. It is the culmination and completion of Sefer Bereshis, the attachment of the people of Israel to the land of Israel. The, 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 the book begins by asserting by what right we consider ourselves to be appropriate in the land of Israel for all time on the part of God, because God's the owner. And the book ends with Yaakov's actions that cement this connection for all time and for us. 
Of course, it is precisely that attachment that is being so heavily challenged today by the Hamas attack, because this is precisely what they attempt to usurp, connection between the people of Israel and the land of Israel, anti-Israel protests, anti-Zionism, the rise in anti-Semitism, it is all related. All of it has at its root to try to destroy this connection, to try to separate the people of Israel from the land of Israel. Just go to Uganda. Just go somewhere else. Those efforts will not succeed. No matter how hard it is, no, how, no, no matter how much pain it causes us, those efforts will not succeed. Because the Torah tells us God created it and God gave it to us. And because Yaakov taught us by his actions that it is ours. My friends, I wish you a good day and a great Shabbos. And I look forward to seeing you soon in person.